Okay, here's a little update where I'm at. It's uh, Wednesday, 10 o'clock ish, thereabouts. Got that inverter up on the wall, it's all secured. Funny how it didn't seem nearly as heavy this morning as it did last night. The, uh, the midnights all been wired. I ran a little low. Uh, and my fan switch out here to output the one, which is auxiliary one, I guess, on this the unit. It's supposed to be 12 volts out. I'm gonna run my fans, which I have to reconfigure. The fan relay here. PVN's all hooked up. This wire here is done, not doing anything. I just disconnected it because I already ran it. Here's my 10 three wires up. I'm getting ready to figure out where this is gonna go. I'm going to come in here and clean the floor up, put something down on the floor, stop bringing the batteries in, hooking them up. This is the end of the wire that's going to go over here to the uh, line out output side of the inverter. Not going to do anything with that switch, I don't need it. Then I got to uh, run my 2 watt cables, which this, uh, this inverter calls for 1 watt, but I got 2 watt. Better to have too big than too small. And I think I'm going to run it with the same 150 amp fuse that I had on the Go Power because that's 1500 watts at 12 volts and this is 3000 watts at 24 volts. So it should be the same fuse. I read the book over and over and over and they make no mention of the fuse. So I'm sure 150 would be sufficient because it's double the voltage and double the power. Worst case scenario, it'll blow and I'll have to put a bigger one in, but I doubt it. Uh, I've got my dip switches set back here. They've changed these quite a bit. There's no longer any information other than a light for your charger or your inverter on or an alarm. It's either off or power save on, power save off. And you can now switch this to strictly inverter. And you don't need to put AC power into it. What I will do later on down the line is come in here and probably take a piece of this and make a power cord where I could plug a generator into it or something if I needed the battery charger. I got plenty of solar, so I've never had to charge the batteries except for the panels. So that's where it's at so far. Um, like I said, they've made a lot of changes to this inverter over the ones they made previously. You can now, as I said, just shut this thing down and use it just as an inverter, which is kind of nice. All right, I'm going to go show you my transfer switch. I'll be right back. Okay, here's my uh, transfer switch, which is in my master bedroom closet, and it's got the power coming up through the uh, the floor. And now i got to hook this number 10 wire into the switch. At the moment, I only have the first three hooked up, but I'm going to hook at least two more of these switches up so I can just flip them on and off as I decide I need them. I'm going to uh, hook up the washing machine so I can do my laundry during the day. The Go Power would run the washing machine right up until it hit the spin cycle, and then it would just overload itself and shut down as it's supposed to. So this inverter shouldn't have any problem doing that. And I'm going to add my bedroom circuit so I can run my air conditioner off the solar at night because it's coming on that time of the year. So I got to do some changes in here, take this panel cover off, make some changes in here, run this back over in here. These transfer switches are extremely simple to hook up. I'm not going to show you how to hook them up. There's plenty of videos on how to hook these up online. If you're not comfortable doing work like that, definitely do not do it. I'm not, this is not a how-to, this is how I'm doing it. And I'm not suggesting anybody do this. That's just how I'm doing it. I just want to make that clear. That being said, these are super easy to hook up. There's nothing to them. Okay, well, I gotta get back after it because uh, when I get done in here, it's time to move another thousand pounds worth of batteries. Can't wait. 
all right that's it for now I'll be back with another update soon okay it's about 5 15 p.m. Wednesday evening I just uh, cut this all together had to make a bunch more cables reconfigure everything this bus bars I bought were really nice I got the midnight up and running just on the uh, standard settings I'm going to go online and play with the computer so my fans will work there's the uh, negative bus bar down there a bunch of extra leftover cables used up all my 2 out wire and all my lugs and lo and behold there's the Ames inverter with the green light that says inverter mode and I have it in the power save mode and when I went to the transfer switch and switched on my bedroom it took I don't know half a second or so oh there's in the middle of the light here green light inverter inverter power on the fan just came on for a second ago in real low speed and shut right off I'm using like nothing out of it I got my uh, bedroom running with some fans in there and a light in the closet so I could see what I was doing that's running the rear wall in the kitchen the refrigerator is going and uh, the middle wall in the re in the living room is powered up and that's the uh, TV radio internet uh, modem all that kind of stuff is powered off of this just like it was with the, uh, the go power so there it is two banks of 24 volts Everything turned out really good. Double, tripled, quadruple checked everything. Ran the new wire for the transfer switch. I got all six uh, switches functioning if I need them. I don't have to have them on, but they are there if I need them. And uh, success. And once again, my uh, Trimco. Battery tool, indispensable, again. Used up all my battery uh, cables that I had. Ran out of lugs. Luckily I had four down in my sh shop in the drawer. So anyway, there it is. Go power is now offline completely. And we're now running 24 volts through the Ames inverter. And uh, it's pretty much doing what I thought it would do. Sit there and basically do nothing that's uh, 3,000 watts there's no load at all on that at all I did call a uh, place I bought it today twice to inquire about the proper size fuse I went up to a 200 amp fuse on that because it supposedly has a 6,000 watt surge for 20 seconds so I figured a 150 fuse wasn't going to cut it so put a 200 in there we'll see if they get back to me there it is. Been going since 7:30 this morning, and I am here to tell you I am wore out. A picture of the classic. Does anybody out there know if this light is always supposed to be on? It's always on. The one on the outback goes out. This one just stays on constantly. So we got 400 and some watts coming in. It's the end of the day, so everything worked, and I'm pretty happy. That's the back side of it. So, 24 volt system is up and running, and the inverter is working, all hardwired in. Life is good. I just got to. Uh, figure out all my settings now that I need for the 24 volt I gotta learn all this stuff I'm used to 12 so that's it we're up and running thanks for going on the little journey with me setting it up thanks for watching and uh, I'll have updates as I get them that's it for now over and out